Good morning. <clears throat> I'm Wimala. I'm a little hoarse today. So hopefully <clears throat> I can clear that out. Still dealing with allergies. I'm assuming it's just in the mornings. So the next piece in the Sharon Salzberg book of essays, A Heart as Wide as the World, which is just has become my favorite book these days. We're in the third section, and I've been kind of randomly reading, but now I'm a little bit more, I'm gonna stay with this, a, some, a few more uh, essays from this last section of the book called The Practice of Transformation. And uh, then, we'll, then we'll end her book and try reading in something else. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> this, is a, this is an essay called The Bridge of Empathy. Empathy is something that we probably need to talk more about. Uh, we've got a lot of suffering going on in the world and how do we relate to that? If you, if you have friends in Florida or um, Puerto Rico or different parts of the world where there's war. We know that there's suffering going on everywhere. So this, is, this essay is The Bridge of Empathy. Let's see what understanding she opens up for us. Contemporary psychological research shows that some individuals, when they are in a highly agitated state of mind, are oblivious to how they are feeling. Their hearts may be racing, their blood pressure climbing, and they may be sweating profusely, yet they are not aware of being angry or afraid or anxious. About one person in six exhibits this pattern being so unaware of their own pain, is it possible that they could understand or emphasize with what someone else may be feeling? Being unable to empathize, how can they live complete lives? When we practice mindfulness, one of the qualities that we are developing is empathy as we open to the full range of experiences within ourselves, we become aware of what we perceive in each moment, no longer denying some feelings while clinging to others. By coming to know our own pain, we build a bridge to the pain of others, which enables us to step out of our self-absorption and offer help. And when we actually understand how it feels to suffer in ourselves and in others, we are compelled to live in a way that creates as little harm as possible. With empathy acting as a bridge to those around us, a true morality arises within. Knowing that someone will suffer if we perform a harmful act or say a hurtful word, we find we do these things less and less. It is a very simple, natural, and heartful response. Rather than seeing morality as a set of rules, we find a morality that is an uncontrived reluctance to cause suffering. In Buddhist teachings and images used to reflect this quality of mind, a feather held near a flame instantly curls away from the heat. When our minds become imbued with an understanding of how suffering feels and fill with a compassionate urge not to cause more of it, we naturally recoil from causing harm. This happens without self-consciousness or self-righteousness. It happens as a natural expression of the heart. As Hannah Arendt said, conscience is the one who greets you if and when you ever come home. 
Two qualities are traditionally attributed to this beautiful and delicate sense of conscience that gives rise to harmlessness. In Pali, they are known as Hiti and Otapa, traditionally translated as moral shame and moral dread. The translation is somewhat misleading as these qualities have nothing to do with fear or shame in the self-deprecating sense. Rather, they have to do with that natural and, com and complete turning away from causing harm. Otapa, or moral dread, comes from a feeling of disquietude at the possibility of hurting ourselves or others. Hiti, moral shame, manifests in the form of reluctance to cause pain to others because we know fully in ourselves how that feels. In this sense, opening to our own suffering can be the source of our deep connection to others. We open to this pain, not for the sake of getting depressed, but for what it has to teach us, seeing things in a different way, having the courage not to harm, recognizing that we are not alone and could never be alone. Sometimes we are afraid to open to something painful because it seems as though it will consume us. Yet the nature of mindfulness is that it is never overcome by whatever is the present object of awareness. If we are mindful of a twisted or distorted state of mind, the mindfulness is not twisted or distorted. Even the most painful state of mind or the most difficult feeling in the body does not ruin mindfulness. A true opening born of mindfulness is marked by spaciousness and grace. In our culture, we are taught to push away, to avoid our feelings. This kind of aversion is the action of a mind caught in separation whether in the active fiery form of anger and rage or in a more inward frozen form like fear. The primary function of these mental states is to separate us from what we are experiencing. But the only way that we can be free from suffering ourselves and avoid doing harm to others is by connection, a connection to our own pain and through awareness and compassion, a connection to the pain of others. We learn not to create separation from anything or anyone. This is empathy. I wanna read that last few sentences again. The only way we can be free from suffering ourselves and avoid doing harm to others is by connection. A connection to our own pain and through awareness and compassion, a connection to the pain of others. We learn not to create separation from anything or anyone. This is empathy. So our mindfulness practice, and I think by extension, our loving kindness practice uh, is what's teaching us to have empathy. Because we're finding that, we're finding that pain and the suffering within us, we're looking at it, we're owning it. We don't have to uh, hang on to it, but we're aware of it and we're understanding it. And that gives us that connection with others to understand and to see their pain, their suffering. A true opening born of mindfulness is marked by spaciousness and grace. I like that one. So, There is a lot of pain and suffering going on in the world. And if we're, if we're working with our own 
mindfulness of our body and our feelings and our, you know, our thoughts and our emotions, well, then we're able to, uh, when we can work with ourselves, then we're able to understand the other. So that's what our practice is all about. And then seeing that connection doesn't mean we can solve everyone's problems, but we can certainly uh, understand what the, what they may be going through, or we, we can understand what uh, when negative behaviors come out of their suffering or their uh, not knowing what's going on within them. So I hope your day is good and you have uh, you have your own way forward through the suffering in the world. And it may be prayer, it may be meditation, but it's important to have a way to, to uh, see ourselves clearly and then to understand how we, can, how we, how we re can relate to this world and not add to the suffering of it, not add to any kind of harm going on. There's enough of that, we don't need to add to it at all. So uh, I do recommend on Wednesday, Billy Tan is going to be speaking by Zoom. So if you go to the temple on Wednesday, at thur Thursday uh, evening at seven, the Zoom, there'll, there'll be the screen with the Zoom, his Zoom presentation. And he's talked to the temple, I think at least once, maybe twice during COVID, but he's in, uh, uh, Malaysia, and he was a, a, a real, really strong student and helper to uh, Bhante Punaji, who died uh, three or four years ago, but who also vis who visited Blue Lotus, and he's a great teacher, and Billy Tan is really carrying on his teachings. But it's on Zoom, so wherever you are, if you just check in I think you can go to the calendar on the Blue Lotus Buddhist Temple dot org site and click on the Wednesday night and get the Zoom. You'll get the Zoom information, and uh, there's no charge. And he's a wonderful speaker, so he'll be doing the the talk on uh, Wednesday night. I recommend him. I think Buna, uh, Bante Punaji. I still like to watch him on YouTube. His talks were pretty amazing. He was a scientist, a doctor and a scientist, even before he became a, a, a very well-respected, strong uh, teacher, Dhamma teacher and monk. So let's sit with our time left and uh, we'll just, why don't we keep working with the body because getting into our own bodies and uh, being aware of ourselves by just sitting with ourselves and being aware of what's rising, what's going on with us, how we feel and how our feelings we're looking at. Uh, if, we, if we can feel pleasant, unpleasant, or in neither, or if we're out of touch with even feeling uh, how the body, how we're doing just in this physical body. And I don't mean specifically like pain, but do we, feel, do we understand when the body is experiencing a pleasant feeling or an unpleasant one? And are we aware too of how that shifts? Sometimes we, we're, we feel an unpleasant feeling and we we're so wanting pleasant that we that we start kind of jerking ourselves around. We're moving too fast. We're trying to escape pain and move to pleasure. And so sometimes when we can sit, just being aware of that, those feelings in the body, just sitting with them, and what may feel like pain may shift, may may shift. Uh, to, to being neutral or to being okay. Sometimes the, something may start out feeling pleasant and then 
Maybe it's like a sound, but it becomes too loud and then it's not pleasant. So we can see how we're sometimes just shifting back and forth. And just that agitation of going from one to the other can create, uh, can create suffering, can create agitation and unrest, and then it becomes all unpleasant. So, well, let's, let's just sit and be mindful of the body, the feelings in the body, and just the body itself. So, just roll your shoulders back, let your spine kind of know you're moving into meditation because you're, you're more at attention, your body's awake. And now with your spine, just relax everything and let the spine lift you up or hold you on the floor so you're in a straight, comfortable position. You can feel more of an alignment in your body. And then let your body relax. Try not to be holding yourself tight. Just let the, let the spine hold you erect. If you want to take in a few deep breaths and inhale through your nose and if you want to just breathe out. But let that help you relax the physical body. And remember that the essay started, if we don't know what's going on in our own bodies, so if we don't know how we're feeling, if we don't know how the physical experiences we're having, just being in the sense world, we don't know how they're affecting us, or uh, do, do, do we feel pleasant? Do we feel unpleasant? Are we just confused? If we're, if we're not in touch with our own bodies, then how can we have empathy? How can we be connected or understand how someone else is feeling? We'll always be struggling with our own, with what's going on within. We won't ever be able to break outside and connect. So it's not being selfish to reconnect with ourselves at all. It's helping us form the pathway to others. So now just feel relaxed. Be aware of the body breathing. Be aware of places in the body where you're feeling tension. Maybe you need to soften and relax a bit more. Make sure your palms are open, either palms up or down, but be sure they're open so there's no tension there. Remember to smile. Just let yourself relax. 
and be with your breath. Let that be your anchor so your focus can be on what's going on with you, with your body. Is your mind pulling you away into stories, into thoughts? Just notice that. If you notice it, come back to the breath. Breathing in, breathing out. aware of yourself, be aware of what's going on within you. Spend the last few minutes of our meditation on loving kindness. We've already begun with ourselves, seeing how we feel, seeing what we can experience in the body about ourselves. The more we know about what, what we need and how we're feeling, the more we're able then to connect with others. So with our loving kindness, send yourself those thoughts. May I be healthy. May I feel strong. May I feel safe in, an, in a world that seems chaotic. And may I be at peace. And then when we can be sincere and truly send those wishes to ourselves 
and see that these are things that we need, that we want for ourselves, then we can begin to send it out and start with those it's easiest to send out to, your loved ones, your dear friends, your family members. May my family members and loved ones and dear friends be, be healthy, be strong, be happy, feel safe in this chaotic world and be able to live in peace. Now just let it move forward even beyond that. So as long as you can, keep radiating out. Sometimes it's too much for us to think that we can send loving kindness to an enemy. So don't, don't do that if that's too much. But if you have just a challenging person, someone who's a little difficult for you, and maybe you're difficult for them, and that makes you both challenging to each other. So however you can send it out, we want to send out to our difficult people. So just choose one person and may my difficult person, as I begin to understand my own nature, myself more and more, I can understand someone who's different from me. I can have empathy for this person so I can send them loving kindness. May this person be healthy and strong May they feel safe in this chaotic world. May they be happy. And may they live in peace. And then we even continue all beings, all human beings and non-human beings, not only on this planet, but throughout the universe. All beings that exist in whatever form, may they be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they be free from fear and worry free from hunger and thirst. May they be able to care for themselves or be cared for by loved ones. And may all beings everywhere live in peace. So with any merit that we've accrued from this meditation, May all of our thoughts and actions and words today be done not only for our own benefit, but for the benefit of all sentient beings throughout the universe. So thank you. And uh, don't forget that tomorrow you can listen to, you can see and listen to Billy Tan. If you uh, go to the Blue Lotus Buddhist Temple org website, you can go to the calendar and pull that event up, and the links will be there. Okay, thank you. I'll see you Thursday. Thanks for being here.